Jamaica now has 143 confirmed cases of COVID-19. This follows 18 new additions over the last 24 hours. Of that number, five are males and 13 are females, ranging from four years old to 56 years old. Three cases are contacts of a confirmed case. The other 15 are under investigation. And there is some suspicion that a number of them are linked to the call center in Portmore, but we are still investigating. 23 persons have recovered and been discharged. Um, and five persons, unfortunately, have passed as a result of COVID-19. We have now tested some 1,424 samples, including the samples that were tested for severe acute respiratory infection. 143 of that number are confirmed positive, while 1,281 are confirmed negative cases. Of the 143 confirmed cases, uh, to date, 52 are from Alarica, the call center in Portmore, St. Catherine. Just to say that the St. Catherine Health Department is actively following the situation at Alarica and are being provided with the additional support personnel to expedite their contact tracing efforts. Uh, in addition to the St. Catherine Health Department, the KSA, uh, Kingston and St. Andrew Corporation um, uh, um, area, and the Clarendon Health Department are also working to the extent that persons who work at Alarica are located in those parishes. Of the total number of staff on record at Alarica, numbering 787, 559 are from St. Catherine. We have made contact with 447. There are some challenges as it relates to 112 of those names because of addresses not being correct. Uh, we are over continuing the efforts to locate those individuals. Their contacts, meaning the contacts of persons who work and who have been tested at Alarica, we have made contact with an additional 179 of their contacts in the parish. The testing continues. Mr. Speaker, in terms of the testing protocol, I know a number of questions have been asked about this. Just let, let me remind the House that in keeping with the testing protocol, specimen must be collected from and will be tested for COVID-19 for the following persons. This is the existing protocol. But let me just say that it is under review constantly as the phase of the virus expansion or spread continues. We adjust the protocol as we go along to, to, to co-opt more groups. All suspected cases, as per the case definition, are tested. All symptomatic contacts of confirmed COVID-19 cases, whether they display symptoms or not. All asymptomatic close contacts of confirmed COVID-19 cases, which is linked to the previous statement I made. All SARI cases for all hospitals. All admitted low respiratory tract infection or pneumonia from all hospitals. All influenza-like illness cases, all healthcare workers who have been assessed to be at risk from exposure to COVID-19 cases, all symptomatic healthcare workers, irrespective of contact history, are tested. And this group essentially forms the core uh, in terms of the targeted groups that are tested as a routine in order to determine the extent of the spread of the virus to detect to contain and, of course, to treat. By Friday of this week, Mr. Speaker, we will add a second facility to do COVID-19 testing. This is at the National Public Health Lab, and this, this facility is now being installed. We expect that this will be able to do an additional 350 samples per eight-hour shift. So essentially, we will be in a position to more than double our testing capacity. Um, in terms of samples per, per day. And depending on whether we operate one or two shifts, we will adjust as the need arises. In terms of the mobile testing, we have retrofitted five mobile units, Mr. Speaker. Up to yesterday, four were deployed to the respective regions. And this is in aid of 
expanding the sampling collection and testing for COVID-19. As part of those expanded testing efforts, we will begin this Friday, April 17, 2020, to, to expand the mobile testing in two health regions, the Southeast Regional Authority and in the Northeast Regional Health Authority. One unit was actually based in Clarendon, and I actually visited the current peace quarantine community where they were collecting samples a few days ago. That was the first one to be deployed. Subsequent to that, additional units have been deployed. The mobile units, Mr. Speaker, will enhance the sampling or collection of sampling. There is a protocol that guides uh, whose sample will be collected. So there, the, we have trained the med techs to uh, up to uh, 55 have volunteered to, to support or work with the mobile units. The, two days ago, 35 were trained, and they are to train the remaining numbers, and they will go out. They will provide the, the discussions or the counseling, if you will, for persons who are so interested. The samples will be collected, taken back into Kingston, and tested either at the National Influenza Lab or the National Public Health Lab. In terms of personal protective equipment, Mr. Speaker, with the threat of the COVID-19, the Ministry of Health has moved um, fairly swiftly with all the challenges of securing personal protective equipment globally uh, because of the demand by all countries of the world. We have moved to, to ensure that we have adequate equipment, personal protective equipment, and to date, orders valuing over 1 billion Jamaican dollars have been made. Major items delivered to date include an additional 35 ventilators, 6 ICU beds, 50 physiological monitors, over 2.2 million PPE items, so that includes the N95 masks, the protective equipment. There are two national quarantine facilities in the Southeast Regional Health Authority, one in Western Region, but negotiations are taking place to add additional capacity. In terms of isolation facilities, Mr. Speaker, there are 22 hospitals with wards for COVID-19 patients, numbering approximately 232 COVID-19 beds ready for use. And up to this morning, there were 57 beds occupied, which means an additional 175 beds available. A further 41 beds, Mr. Speaker, are to be ready in southern region within three weeks, 10 to be available in northeast region as needed, and a further three to be ready in the western region. This means, Mr. Speaker, that of a total of 54 additional isolation beds in fairly short order, 286 within the next three weeks. In addition, the numbers of high dependency beds and ICU beds will continue to increase over time. Uh, this is where, of course, we have the very severe cases. Currently, 66 patients remain in isolation and 21 persons are in quarantine at government facilities. Mr. Speaker, we are pleased to report at this time that persons in isolation remain stable and there are no critically ill patients at this time.